Hey, what's up guys? I just wanted to get on here real quick and talk to you guys about five reasons why businesses fail um, in today's society or modern day as you call it. So number one would be poor cash flow management. Number two is inability to innovate and adapt to change. Number three is unwillingness to separate personal from business. And number four is weak marketing, advertising, and lack of social media impression. And number five is attempt to grow too fast or over leveraging yourself. So uh, let's break down number one and what exactly I mean by poor cash flow management. So when you have a business, you have to manage all of the resources and revenue that come into your business. Like right here, I've got six vehicles in here. I have to manage these vehicles properly. So when I sell a unit, it is completely up to me being a one man operation to know what to do with the capital when I sell one of these vehicles, right? So where businesses fail, they take maybe the money that they had invested into that vehicle versus the profit on that vehicle, and they will mix those two numbers. So it's perfectly fine with putting your profits back into the business, but you have to track down how much you made on that unit. Meaning, so let, let's, let's take for example, I sell this vehicle. If I have $10,000 in this vehicle, right? 10,000, 10, I sell this vehicle for $14,000. That means I netted or I grossed a profit of $4,000. So I'm gonna take that $10,000 and I'm going to invest it back into my business, but I'm also going to separate that $4,000 that I made in gross profit, net profit, right? And I'm going to split that. So maybe I pay myself, I pay, you know, whoever I sub work out to or employee, whatever, whatever the case may be. But you have to allocate those figures properly, right? Me personally, I will probably put that 3000 back into the business and pay myself $1,000, whatever the case may be, right? So that's number one. Number two, uh, the inability to innovate and adapt to change. So t we are in a evolving world, man. Things are constantly changing. Right now, uh, we're like eight, 9% inflation, right? So me personally, what did I have to do? I had to adapt to change. I had to adapt to inflation. I had to adapt to that. So prices on my, my vehicles, what I have to pay, what I pay to get these vehicles reconditioned, all of those prices went up. My cost for headlights, my cost for tires and wheels and all that stuff, it went up. So what did I have to do? I had to figure out a way to recondition vehicles to where I would still have a fair figure in those vehicles so I could still make money. So I had to bump my prices up because my cost went up. I had to adapt to change. But at the same time, I had to offer certain incentives to make it worth it for the consumer as well. So I adapted to change. I offered videos. I started making more videos. When I started to see things change, I make more videos, put more money into videos, uh, you know, just, just, you know, stuff like that. Okay, number three, unwillingness to separate personal from business. Okay, so... Uh, this one is, is, is kind of a hard topic to talk about because everybody's situation is different, right? So uh, you could be married, you know, you could allow, you, you, you could have already built your business up and you could have allowed your wife to come into your business, right? But you have to know how to separate the two. Once you mix personal and business, it's too many emotions involved in the business now. Now you're making decisions based on feelings and you're not making decisions for the progress of the business. So that, and then another thing like family, close family relatives, you start letting them come in, start working for you and stuff like that. Man, those don't, that, that's when stuff goes left. And I've talked to many, many successful entrepreneurs, many, many successful business owners, and that's one thing that they tell you. Don't get too tangled up mixing personal with business. You know, you're doing personal stuff with employees. You're doing personal stuff with, with business partners. Man, it's, it's not good for business. Business is business. Personal is personal. But I'm not saying put your business ahead of your personal life, but you do have to separate the two. And in fact, if you really know, that's what an LLC is for. An LLC is to protect you as a person and makes your business a completely different person than you. So let's talk about... Number four, so weak marketing, advertising, and lack of social media impression. So this kind of goes back to number two, um, the inability to adapt to change. That's why I kind of cut off short because I knew I was going to come back to it. So 
this just basically kind of comes down to modern day. So now it's more Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, you know what I'm saying? Uh, it, it's, 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 that's, that's, that's the new way. Twitter, you know, that is how you market your business nowadays. You don't market your business in newspapers. You don't market your business in, in, in telephone ads and TV ads. Nobody wants to do that no more, man. We want to market our stuff on Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat. We want to pay for ads there because that's what works. That is where the modern day consumer is looking for whatever you're selling. Whatever you're selling, they are in the market for it on social media. So now you see a lot of older gentlemen getting out the car business because they are used to people pulling up to them, coming to them to buy cars when that is not the case no more. I mean, you, you can still get drive-by customers if you're over there in a good area, you got a good street and stuff like that, but that is not how you that is not how you sell anymore. You have to put your stuff out there. You have to put yourself out there. You have to market. You have to actually you have to have a creative eye. You know, I figured that's that was one thing that I saw when I first started selling these trucks when I was younger, when I was like 20, you know, I saw that like, man, I know that I can pay a little more for this guy right here because he's not gonna advertise the truck as well as I am. I'ma buff it out. I'm gonna put headlights. I'm gonna take great pictures. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna use my iPhone camera right to advertise a lot better than he would, you know. So that's one gap that I saw getting into car business and being up against up in competition a lot of against a lot of older gentlemen who are a lot smarter than me because they had a lot more experience than me. But I saw a flaw. I saw I saw that gap. I I caught that. I caught that as an entrepreneur and I attacked it and I continue to attack it. You know, I am willing to pay a little more than them because I'm going to advertise the vehicle better than them. So let's talk about uh, the very, very last one. Attempt to grow too fast and over leveraging yourself. So what I mean by this is when you when you try to take on too much. So basically leverage, you know, debt, borrowing money, uh, borrowing money is great for business when you are trying to grow fast. If you want to grow fast you borrow money. That's what you do. That's that's the way it works. That's that's how it's set up, right? Okay, so what you have to understand is when you borrow money, you you you're now you, you you're in debt to that money regardless whether you have it or you don't. So where businesses fail is they take on a lot of debt, but they don't have savings for themselves. And this kind of goes back to number 1. You could take on $100,000 in debt, right? Your net worth could be $10,000. You already lost you already lost when you took on a $100,000 loan and your net worth was only $10,000. You cannot afford to take on a $100,000 loan, realistically. So uh, my motto is never never out leverage your net worth. That is, that is my number one motto, never out leverage your net worth. So if I'm worth $300,000, right? I cannot over leverage more than $300,000 because I'm basically leveraging against myself, against what I'm worth because I know I can handle it, right? So that's the smartest way um, to always, if, if you wanna go that route, if you wanna grow fast, but a lot of businessmen, they try to grow too fast, get into a storefront too fast, getting into a car dealership too fast. Man, it took me a year to get a car dealership. I sold cars from my mom's house at first before I got into a car dealership. You know, I did that for a year. I sold cars from my buddy's, buddy's dealership. You know, you have to work your way up to those things. And before I even got a shoe store, man, I. I sold shoes from home, you know, for a long time. But the reason why this topic was so important for me to do is because I'm coming up on my, me and my partner are coming up on our five year anniversary for when we started our Player Souls business. I have a shoe store as well. Uh, I have another business and we're coming up on our five year anniversary. So that's something that I really just wanted to talk about because uh, it's a very, very big deal, man, because a lot of businesses in the next year or two, you're going to see a lot of small businesses, a lot of uh, medium-sized business, you're gonna see them fail because they didn't manage. They didn't manage certain things properly. They didn't manage their resources properly. You know, and this is a perfect time to where you start to look back in your business when things slow down. You sit back, and you can just, just kind of see like, how am I able to stay afloat? And you break those those five things down, and you see, you know, okay, I have savings. I have an emergency fund. I can protect myself if things go left. Right. And those are the things that keep you safe. They keep you safe. So, man, if you're in business for yourself, man, anything like that, man, keep these five things in mind, man, because they are very important. 
And like I tell any youngster coming up or anybody in business, man, the number one thing you can do, it always comes back to the money, man. Make sure you are saving your money. If you make a profit, save it, man. If you make a profit, put it back into your business. But when you put it back into your business, you got to know where it's at. You got to know where it's at. So if I sell this truck right here, like I say, 14000 I make a profit of four grand because I had 10 in it. And I take one, pay myself, take three, put it back into the business. But I put that three in this truck right here. So when I liquidate this truck right here, I need to I need to be able to grab that three, right? And I need to be able to grab the profit that I make on this truck and put it into it, roll it over into another truck. That's how you come up, man. That's how you come up. So please, 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 man. That is number one. Manage the money. If you can manage the money, everything else will fall in the line. You'll be able to put other people in position to take care of the rest for you if you can manage the money properly. Money and people. Money and people. You have to be able to be, be good with people as well. But uh, yeah, man, I just wanted to touch on that real quick. Uh, just a straight through video, no cuts, no edits, no nothing, man. I, I just did this off the dome. I just wanted to get that off of my chest real quick because I've been having a few people uh, kind of want to get to know me and stuff like that. But I'll do a separate video on that. But man, I appreciate the support. I appreciate everybody who watching. Man, please like and subscribe for the YouTube algorithm. And uh, I look forward to doing some more, you know, communicating with you guys. I appreciate y'all. Y'all take care.